Hi, uh, welcome to this uh, module. This module is in continuation with the last module in which we have seen EEG and uh, the difference between EMG. We have seen e ECG, EMG, EEG and then we have also seen uh, brain waves, right? Uh, how the EEG is generated um, and, and you now know that is a summation of the uh, signals coming out of the uh, neurons, right? Uh, and if it is synchronized, you will get a better amplification compared to non-synchronized uh, signals. Uh, we have also seen uh, few uh, videos where we were able to understand how to place the electrodes and what is 1020 system, uh, what is the parietal, occipital, frontal lobes and how this uh, 1020 system helps to uniformly uh, place the electrodes uh, uh, to measure the EEG signals. Now, let us understand uh, in this module how to uh, design a electronic module or a instrumentation part so that the recorded signal can further be processed all right. So, uh, let us let us understand what you require for EEG measurement system. It would be electrodes, it will be amplifiers, it will be filters and then finally, either you can uh, have your own GUI which is your graphical user interface or you can use a oscilloscope. Uh, so, it can be digital oscilloscope uh, that you can use for analyzing the signals. Uh, so, if you see the slide, uh, the EEG measurement as you already know now consists of the following. one electrodes and when you talk about electrodes it are it can be either dry electrodes or it can be wet electrodes right. Then uh, uh, we, I, I will show you as a separate class how the electrode looks like and other things for right now just uh, uh, let us see from the theoretical point of view. Second uh, uh, <coughs> part of the system would be amplifiers with filters. You have to amplify the signal and the signals generally are in range of micro volts right. Where if you talk about uh, ECG or uh, EMG the signals would be in milli volts right. So, since the signals are extremely small we have to be very good with our amplifiers and filter system. So, uh, the amplifiers would be would help us to amplify the signal uh, as the name suggested and the filters will help us to remove any artifacts. Finally, to analyze the signal we can use the digital oscilloscope. So, what is the use of recording electrode right? You already know the use of recording electrode is to record it is so, so simple right. But uh, still let us see uh, uh, wh what kind of electrodes are there. So, for acquiring recording high quality EEG signals there exist different types of electrode. The following are the different type of electrodes for testing number one disposable kind of electrodes. What are disposable electrodes? These are gel less and pre gel types. So, once you use it you cannot reuse it ok. Second is reusable disc electrode gold, silver, stainless steel or tin. We have seen this electrodes if you if you remember uh, in one of the slides right. Uh, let me see if I can find out that particular slide. Uh, I believe that it is in, in some uh, other other PPT. So, anyway I, I believe you, you remember this uh, those slides uh, where uh, we, I was showing you different kind of uh, electrodes available right. Uh, where it is either having a cap of gold cap or a silver cap or stainless steel cap uh, or there are dry electrodes with spikes right. Uh, we have seen in one of the module anyway I like I said I will show it to you uh, in one of the lectures. So, you can see how the electrode looks like. Uh, the next one would be headbands and electrode caps. So, if you see the slide the next one is headbands and electrode caps there you can directly wear the cap to record the signal. Then there are saline based electrodes and finally, there are needle electrodes ok. Now, out of this the most commonly used are scalp electrodes which are AG, AGCL discs all right, silver, silver chloride disc of 1 to 3 millimeter in diameter. Whereas, the needle electrodes are used for long recordings and are invasively inserted it are it, those are inserted invasively. Now, you have to understand the term invasive, minimally invasive, non-invasive, invasive. What is invasive? Invasive is like let us say heart surgery, heart surgery. 
heart surgery is invasive when you open the heart and you perform the uh, surgery it is invasive minimally invasive minimally invasive this term is used for example if uh, we are using uh, the the catheters right catheters or uh, we we use glucometer to understand the uh, blood glucose concentration then what you use a small needle you you pinch it on the finger and it does not actually go deep inside it is just to pinch. So, it is minimally invasive that is called minimally invasive. Finally, the third term is non invasive non invasive non invasive is when you do not have to insert a tool or device or needle inside the body ok non invasive. So, disposable electrodes non invasive reusable non invasive headbands non invasive saline based non invasive needle electrodes are minimally invasive needle electrodes are minimally invasive ok. So, if you want to record for long time needle electrodes are best otherwise you can go for other electrodes most commonly are AG, AGCL. So, if you want to design the circuit you require amplifiers and filters and uh, uh, as you already know signal conditioning circuits are required in order to amplify and make compatibility with the recording device such as displays, records uh, or recorders, ADM uh, analog to digital converters uh, and uh, uh, other electronic uh, circuits. So, the acquired signal in, in this particular case which is EEG is extremely low or you can say is very low of very low magnitude and additionally it contains artifacts all right. So, it will be difficult if you do not filter this artifacts to understand what are the signals and what is what are the no, wh wh why the signal are these signals from the EEG or the signals are corrupted by noise by artifacts. So, we need to uh, amplify and remove amplify the signal remove the unwanted noise to improve overall signal to noise ratio is also called SNR right. And in, in, in very simple definition it can be AD by AC difference of differential gain or ratio of differential gain by common mode gain AD by AC. So, what are the basic requirements that a potential amplifier should satisfy the first requirement the physiological process to be monitored should not be influenced in any way by the amplifier. So, you need to understand what kind of physiological process uh, you are monitoring. Second part is the measured signal should not be distorted. Third part is the amplifier should provide best possible separation of signals and interferences. That is why you generally use instrumentation amplifier, right? Differential amplifier. Fourth one is the amplifier has to offer protection of the patient from any hazardous electric shock, right? It should not, uh, the patient should not feel any kind of electric shock whenever you attach any kind of electronic module uh, or your design electronic module uh, along with your uh, that is attached or interface with the recording electrodes. Finally, which is the fifth point the amplifier itself has to be protected against damages that might result from high input voltages as they occur during the application of defibrillators or electrosurgical instruments. The electrosurgical uh, instruments as well as defibrillators requires high voltage and this high voltage should not cause uh, uh, any kind of problem with uh, it should not destroy your amplifier it should not affect the amplifier. So, amplifier itself needs to be protected. One is the amplifier has to offer protection to the patient, second is amplifier itself has to be protected. So, the amplifier should have the following features when you talk about EEG signal conditioning. The first feature is the differential amplification with the driven shield inputs, driven shield inputs very important point which makes it workable even in electrically unshielded environments that increases the 
signal to noise ratio. Second point about the amplifier should be that it should offer high input impedance and low bias current so that we can record small signals. The next point is dual fixed frequency band pass and independent gate controllers to allow the recording of different signals from same source with the range allowed by the next stage. This is required and that is why we can have the frequency band pass independent gate controllers up to uh, 107,000. Finally, the mode moderate common mode rejection ratio is a ratio of gain of differential mode over the gain of common mode right. We require common mode rejection ratio you already know it is a differential mode to common mode ratio. Now, for the artifacts and filtering the signal distortion due to artifacts contaminates the original E signal we already know artifacts can be noise right and the results in the change and what is what are the effects of this artifacts the the art this artifacts affects the overall signal and results in change in the sequence either with higher amplitude or changing the signal shape and both are not correct. We do not want the artifacts to change the signal that we obtained or acquire using the electrodes all right. So, the cause of artifacts in the recorded EEG signal is either due to the patient related or it can be because of the technical issues. So, what are the artifacts from the from the patient like when you attach the uh, EEG or ECG or EMG electrode let us say you attach the EMG electrode on the muscle or EEG electrodes on the scalp or ECG electrode on the uh, uh, 12 lead electrodes uh, on the heart right and, and the other surface as well as the hand and uh, uh, legs. What are the artifacts that can occur because of the subject? So, one is the body movement right now you when you breathe when you move right these are the artifacts will cause the noise or uh, in the uh, we, or artifacts will, will will affect the overall signal. Second is your pulse pulse maker right then it will cause effect in ECG eye moments right this eye is also muscle. So, if I have scalp electrodes and if I moment my, I, I, I just uh, blink my eyes then also the signals would be affected. If I uh, uh, move my eyes right left right up down that also there is a e EMG signal. So, if I it is EMG electrodes here, here and here then I will be able to measure this voltage change millivolts change uh, during my blinking or eye moments. So, this also causes artifacts because we are not interested in the EMG signal we are interested in the EEG signal. So, this is a artifact finally, sitting. So, if you sit then the way you sit right also affects the overall signal. While the technical uh, uh, related artifacts includes 50 to 60 hertz power line interference which is extremely common, impedance fluctuation, if there is a moment of cable and finally, if there are broken wires or the broken wire contacts right. So, the AC wire or AC power line noise can be decreased by decreasing electron impedance and by uh, shorter electrode wires. So, if you see the slide what you can see is the the causes of artifacts in according signal like we discussed for the patient artifacts and the technical related artifacts and we can reduce the power line noise by decreasing the impedance by shorter electrode wires. So, let us see filtering requirement the filtering requirement is to design a filter that can remove those artifacts. So, a high pass filter is required for reducing low frequencies coming from bioelectric potentials that is breathing etcetera. So, its cutoff frequency usually lies in the range of 0.1 to 0.7 hertz. Also to ensure the signal is band limited a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency equal to highest frequency of our interest is used this is in range of 40 hertz or up to less than one half of the sampling rate. So, we will see what, what does it mean you see here the circuit design right and if you if you can see uh, the first stage or before even first stage there are coaxial cables very important so that uh, uh, it can be it, it will filter out the noise and also if you see the the role the role of coaxial cable or shielded inputs uh, is that the capacitance between the electrodes in the shield can be cancelled. So, the, the help of this coaxial cable is significant. 
you can see here right when the electrodes can be connected uh, to the first stage which is your input stage amplifier and then there is a broadband amplification this will further amplify the signal you can control the gain using uh, either this one or this circuit depending on what kind of signal you are processing and finally there is a band pass filter amplification right which you can see as a four stage so if in another way you can always say that uh, the eeg signal conducting circuit consists of four stages initial stage which is a initial input stage then broadband stage gain controller stage and final band pass amplification stage so, suppose in exam if you are asked this question you can easily answer so what is the first stage of the circuit you can see first stage right what is this stage so the input stage uses ina116 because it is critical stage and overall performance of the amplifier is decided by this stage you can see here the input stage amplifier uses ina116 why because uh, this is extremely critical stage and the feature of this ic in particular is the shield inputs and what is the importance of shielding the inputs is to reduce the capacitance between the electrode or the influence that uh, occurs on the signal because of the capacitance between the electrode and the shield which is considered as a noise this capacitance can be uh, or the effect of capacitance can be cancelled with connection of the input coaxial cable through the buffered guarded drive pins thus preventing the electrostatic interference so electrostatic interference uh, uh, occurs because of the capacitive coupling between uh, them that also can be reduced that is why ina116 should be your input stage when you are talking about the eeg amplification also if you see the slide further uh, additionally it is exceptionally high input impedance so ina116 has a extremely high input impedance low input bias current which makes it suitable choice to record signals of low amplitude all right and finally it has only limited slew rate of 0.8 volt per microsecond thus if the gain is too high its output may be distorted for fast changing input therefore the gain stage is limited to 19.5 if you understand this one then the gain is limited to 19.5 let us see the next stage so later stage of the circuits are broadband gain controller band pass amplifier so, the next stage is band pass filtering it uses two pole filter with gain about 93.4 hence it can filter the noise signal with amplification also its output recovers faster when the amplifier is saturated by sudden changes in DC offset you can read this slide later on the point is that the, 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 the stages that are used in this circuit uh, we will be showing you as a, as a demonstration how to design such a circuit. Uh, one in simulink and second is as a part of the experiment. So, in this stage is the second ga gain controller stage if you see a capacitor is used to cut off the DC offset from previous stage you see this one the gain controller stage the capacitor is used right to cut off the DC offset because DC cannot pass through capacitor we know that. The switch is connected across the fixed register for further attenuation to next stage if required you see the switch that is there there is a switch. So, if you require further attenuation the switch is there uh, in, in both the uh, gain controller uh, circuit and the final stage is a band pass filter with amplification it allows to separate the input signals to two different frequencies if you want to see a low frequency signal or you want to see high frequency signal then you can select the band pass stage accordingly this is for low frequency signal this is for high frequency band right. So, this is the overall circuit like I said we will be showing you this circuit its performance using Simulink we will also be showing you uh, this circuit along with the EEG as a uh, electrodes and we will show you how to record the signals uh, as a experiment. So, let us see um, uh, two videos all right uh, which shows the variable sensing and BMP bio signals. Quantum Applied Science and Research, or Quasar, is a world leader in non-invasive biosensing technology. Over a decade of research has culminated in Quasar's patented ultra-high impedance sensor technology. This dry EEG sensor forms the basis of the DSi-1020. 
This headset is designed to reproducibly position 21 sensors according to the 1020 international system. The headset is easy to use and can be put on by the user in less than five minutes without skin preparation or the use of gels. EEG data quality has signal fidelity comparable to that obtained with conventional wet electrode systems and is designed to operate in a laboratory or office environment. Here we see signals due to blinking, jaw clenches, and EEG alpha activity, all acquired in real time by QStream, the data acquisition software designed for use with the DSi-1020. Quasar has also developed sophisticated gauges for cognitive state classification. These can be tailored for specific research and monitoring applications and are implemented in real time. The DSi-1020 is a fully ambulatory system with wireless transmission capability and onboard memory storage. Unencumbered by wires, the wearer can move freely and patented technologies reduce environmental and motion artifacts. We always welcome new innovative scientific collaborations. Please contact us to discuss your applications or to arrange for collaboration where we can help you meet your research needs. So you may have seen there's a few devices become available on the market which claim to measure your brain waves or your EEG and use that to control games or to fly a helicopter or there's even a, devi a device which is my particular favourite which is called the Neko Mimi which is a pair of cat ears and it claims to use your brain power to measure your emotions and uh, shows whether you're happy or whether you're sad and if you're talking to a person whether you like them or if you hate them so it's kind of showing the world what you're thinking. So these devices are all quite interesting, quite exciting, but as we've seen in uh, previous videos, it's actually quite difficult to measure a clean EEG signal without also measuring artifacts such as your eye blinks, um, just your movements generally, or even like your muscle activity in your face all affects the signal. So as you can't see what these devices are actually measuring as a raw signal and all you can see is the output, so the ears moving or the actual game, we're interested to see what they're actually measuring because we found it difficult to do this before. So as an example, we're using the MindFlex device today and this is what the MindFlex looks like and it just has a simple dry electrode which goes on your forehead and then it has um, a ground electrode which goes to your ear and then your negative electrode goes to your other ear. And um, the internal circuit that powers, well, controls the device, controls the game, uh, is this. And it just takes the signals from these electrodes and it does a Fourier transform on them. And so you just get the different frequency bands and it uses that to control the game. So we've removed this and we're just interested to see what's actually being measured just by these electrodes. So we've just taken a cable out, okay. I'll put this on. There we go. And then you may remember, uh, remember our bioamplifier from our previous videos, so we'll be using that again today. And we're just going to connect the ground to the middle, and then our positive electrode and our negative. And I'll just put this on my arm. Now, you may remember in previous videos when we've been measuring EEG, we've used a gel electrode. This is our gel electrode here that we would typically use to measure biosignals. And we'd usually uh, clean the area where we connect the electrode and abrade the skin to remove dead skin cells, oil that's on the skin or makeup or anything else. And that gives a better connection and uh, lowers the skin impedance and allows us to record a cleaner signal. But what's interesting about most of these devices that are available on the market is they just use a dry electrode and they don't recommend for you to clean the skin or anything. So it'd be interesting to see what we're going to record today. So let's have a look at our signal and that's clearly 50 hertz noise we're just seeing at the minute so we can remove that with our notch filter and see what's underneath. 
Now there's definitely a signal. We can look at the Fourier transform of that to see what frequencies we're measuring. And now we can see if we can measure any artifacts, so we'll try eye blinks. And that's definitely having an effect on the signal. But it's still very noisy. There may be some EEG in there, but just using the dry electrode, we're not getting a good enough contact with the skin. So what we can do is we can leave this for 10 minutes and see if we can get a cleaner signal after, we, after we've got a better connection. Okay, so it's been about 10-15 minutes, and now we can have a look at our signal and see if it's clearer. Okay, and um, so we definitely um, reduced the amplitude of our signal after 10-15 um, minutes. Um, and what we could be seeing now is EEG, but we could also be seeing other artifacts as well. So we can demonstrate these to you just by um, me blinking my eyes. So you can clearly see um, the jump in the signal is to do with my eye movements and that's because the electrodes right beside my eyes and then if I do some facial expressions so I'm really happy I'm using the Neko Mimi yay hey it's so excited <laughs> uh, and that's uh, EMG coming through so that's me moving different muscles in my face and just even me talking right now is uh, creating artifacts just by me again moving my facial muscles and there's also movement artifacts in there, so if I move my head. So it's something that I could be doing while I play the game, because there's, there's nothing in the instructions that say you're to remain completely still, but you can clearly see that this is all affecting the signal. So looking at our um, frequency sp uh, spectrum we're getting there from the Fourier transform, we're definitely um, getting uh, frequencies um, in the EEG band, so that's good. That means there is EEG in there, but as we've just demonstrated, there's so many other artifacts going on, it's difficult to see how these devices are just measuring the EEG and using that to control the device. It's completely up to you whether you believe these devices are working the way they say they are, but it does seem quite obvious that it's, it's very difficult to just measure your brain waves or your EEG without measuring other artifacts as well and this is all going to have an effect on the output of these devices. Now we don't know exactly what kind of filters all these devices are using and uh, they may claim that they remove different artifacts by doing different things but um, the, the EMG spectrum is, uh, is within the EEG spectrum so it would be impossible to completely remove uh, the EMG while still leaving the EEG, so uh, it's probably unlikely that they're doing that. So we've created a YouTube playlist so you can have a look at lots of the different devices that are available commercially and also different applications of the same kind of um, head device, uh, different electrodes, and you can make up your own mind what you think um, these videos are showing or what you think the device is measuring. Okay, so what you have seen in those things are uh, so in, in particular let us let us uh, summarize this module in, in in this module we have seen what are the eeg signals how can it rather than what are the eeg signals we have we have looked at how the eeg signals can be acquired and how it can be processed by designing an electronic instrumentation circuit and then finally we have seen what are the uh, variable sensing technologies or, or a short video on variable sensing and a short video on the uh, bmp Right. So, we, we, will, we will talk about this more in, in the experimental part, uh, till then you just look at this module once again, uh, understand that as many times as you uh, watch the video, yeah, you will have more uh, questions and uh, uh, you, you may find that okay, uh, how, how exactly this uh, INA116 should be used or why we should use only INA116 not something else. Right? what kind of electrodes we should use, why generally AG, AG, CL electrodes are used, right? are there better, why, what is the importance between this just a patch electrodes and the cup electrodes, right? so, several questions can arise when you read and listen to videos twice, thrice you will have list of questions which you can ask through our forum. Right. We will also have one hour uh, live uh, YouTube video class uh, where Dr. Mahesh will be uh, taking it. Uh, so, you, you feel free to ask us anything through the NPTEL forum, uh, look at the video and I will see you in the next module till then you take care.